Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, sometimes, as it turns out, I am a bit behind on uh, certain things in the technology uh, ecosphere, so to speak. And uh, it's only been recently that I've discovered something called Tailscale. So it was actually the folks over at Tiny Pilot who introduced me to Tailscale uh, by just bringing up their name and then just kind of leaving it at that. Uh, it's been a bit more recently that I've actually started implementing Tailscale. And as soon as I figured out how easy it was to set up and use, uh, I installed it on everything. So what I want to show you in this video is how to do exactly that and how to then communicate between devices once you're using Tailscale. So here we are on my desktop and this is uh, the Tailscale website. Uh, like it says here, it's a secure network that just works. Uh, in fact, when I uh, started setting this up, I was I was honestly concerned, dumbfounded, confused about how easy it was to set up and actually implement and then communicate between devices. Uh, when they say it just works, it, it just works. Uh, I was just blown away by how easy it was to set up. And so here we've got, uh, like it says, a zero config VPN installs on any device in minutes, manages firewall rules for you and works from anywhere. And of course, in order to work from anywhere, uh, you need an internet connection. So keep that in mind. While this says it's a VPN, don't think of it as a VPN like Nord or PIA or something like that. This is a virtual private network to communicate between your devices, not to actually go out and uh, communicate with the world and obfuscate your IP and get geo restrictions and things like that. That's not this. This is to communicate between devices securely uh, via a virtual private network. Think of it more like a virtual local area network uh, with encryption. So uh, let's go a little further into here. Uh, basically, you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like uh, when, when you've got it installed on a desktop application. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit further, like it says, uh, no config files, no firewall ports. That means no port forwarding. And that is what really, really makes this uh, a game changer in my opinion. So that's kind of the, the general idea of how this works. So over on my Synology device, I've got a couple of VMs running, uh, one for Open Media Bolt and one for Windows. Those are the two that we're going to uh, kind of go through the installation process with so that you can get an idea of how this uh, setup process works. And then I'll actually show you uh, my tail scale network and how easy it is to communicate between devices. First off, uh, let's jump over uh, to Windows, which I've got uh, clear over here. And of course, I've got their website up here as well because I'm going to have to uh, go ahead and download their software. Uh, here we can see that download for uh, tail scale for Windows requires Windows 7 or later. So let's go ahead and download that. So 22 and a half megs to download. And there we go. Uh, this is a VM, so it's going to run a little slower. So let's go ahead and just run that now. And we'll say yes. And we're just gonna go ahead and let it install where it wants to install by default. And it's done, so let's go ahead and click on close. And then right here it says tail scale authentication needed. Click the tail scale icon to log in. So we'll click that. So now it wants me to sign in. You will need to have an account uh, either set up in advance or you can create one from right here. Uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, is just log in uh, with an email address. Okay, so after I logged in, now we're seeing this auth authorization successful. You can now close this window. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll just go over here uh, and click on log in. So here we are uh, on my dashboard for this account. We can see that I've just got my uh, my one account in here, my one desktop. Uh, this is just a, a demo thing here. In fact, it even says, if you hover over that, it's a test server that can be reached over tail. In fact, it can only be reached over tail scale. And that's what's cool about this is that uh, while well, well, I've got this IP address right here, if I come over um, and just open up uh, a terminal. So let's just do a uh, command prompt. And let's uh, just, this is this is on my host machine. Uh, so let's just, uh, let's do ping 100.82.222.103. Nothing happens, uh, it just, it requests times out. So let's jump over to my virtual machine here and do the same thing. And let me move this so I can see it. So we'll do ping. <clears throat> 100.82.222.103. And here we go. Now we're getting a, a prompt response in less than one millisecond. And that's because uh, we're connected via my Tailscale account. When you're connected to your 
uh, Tailscale account, you can only access the devices in your account. So even if you connect to a Tailscale uh, server or your uh, Tailscale network, you won't be able to ping my network or communicate with any of my devices unless I send you an invite to do so. So that's how that kind of works in the background. Uh, so it's it's always very self-contained virtual uh, LAN, basically, virtual local area network. Now we've got um, our uh, Windows machine set up. So now let's jump over to uh, Open Media Vault. Here we can see, uh, again, like I said, I've got Open Media Vault here. And here it is. I can see that my IP address is 192.168.1.133. And if I come over to Open Media Vault, or sorry, uh, yeah, to Open Media Vault, uh, we can see that I do have a shared folder uh, called Files. Um, and then over here, I've got Portainer up and running just, just because. Um, but so what I want to do, just to show that these are connected, um, is I want to do uh, double backslash 192.168.1.133. And right there is that files. There are a couple of files in there. And um, so that way we know that we are able to connect to that Open Media Vault virtual machine. So I know I'm kind of over explaining some of this, but I feel it's kind of necessary. Uh, so what I want to do next is actually uh, install uh, Tailscale on this Open Media Vault uh, system here. So what I'm going to do is bring up PowerShell on my host machine. Uh, and again, this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to do uh, SSH uh, root at 192.168.1.133. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so uh, now I'm logged in, ready to go. So what I want to do next uh, is actually come back over here. Uh, we're going to go to Linux. And here are, there are a few additional steps here in order to get this set up on Linux, but they're pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop these uh, into uh, a couple of windows here. So the first thing we're gonna do is add tail skills, package, sign and key and repository, paste anyway. Okay, that's good. We got an okay response. We can see that right there. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, yep, yeah, paste anyway. Great, so we've gone ahead and done that. So now we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna run an update uh, just to update all of our repositories and whatnot. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and actually install Tailscale. Uh, we'll just go ahead and paste that. Uh, so we're going to do sudo apt-get install Tailscale, paste. Okay, so now that's done. One more command here, which would be sudo or sudo Tailscale up and uh, paste. Okay, so after some fiddling and realizing that I had it uh, on the, the wrong account. Uh, so basically now we've got this login screen or this login uh, URL. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, opened that link uh, in another window. Unfortunately, I couldn't show that, uh, but I've gone ahead and done that. And basically what it says now is that again, authorization successful. You cannot close this window. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna come back over here to Windows and we're just gonna refresh this screen. In fact, it just showed up automatically there. So now we've got a couple of different IP addresses here, uh, one for Windows, one for Linux. Uh, and here what we can see, uh, in fact, if I come back over to here um, and I right click, we can see uh, this device, we can see network devices, my devices, right there is um, uh, Synology OMV. So if I click that, uh, it's copied that IP address. If I paste that, oops. And then if I go over here into a new tab, and paste that in, right there is my open media vault. Uh, so my, my login, if I type in my username and password, like so, uh, this is uh, the exact same uh, setup. In fact, if we take a look over here, uh, this has been up for 26, 27 minutes now. So if I come back over to here, oops, right here, and go to home, dashboard, 27 minutes, nine seconds, um, so, uh, same, same basic thing there. So you can see that I'm, I, I am accessing the same dashboard from two different IP addresses. Uh, one is a local IP address. One is the tail scale IP address. And it's okay for me to show you both of these one, because the, one of the IP addresses is local and it's on my local network and you would have to get in to my network to see it anyway. And the second one requires that you be authenticated on my tail scale account in order to connect to it. So I'm not worried about showing you these IP addresses for those two reasons. So let's go ahead and minimize uh, that just so we can do that. So again, we've got this network um, and then 192.168.1.133. Uh, that is the Open Media Vault uh, uh, IP address. So let's go ahead and open a new, uh, oops, sorry. So let's go ahead and open a new 
um, a window here. So let's just uh, just do File Explorer there. And then if I do double backslash and paste right there uh, and then there, uh, those are <laughs> the exact same. So in fact, just to show this, I'm gonna click on that picture right there and delete it. And I'm gonna say yes. And here you can see that's my local and that is my tail scale IP address. So that is just a very, very basic uh, demonstration of how to both set up uh, tail scale on a, on a Windows environment as well as a Linux environment. Uh, they've got all of the steps. Of course, all of that will be linked in the description down below. But there are a few other things that I wanted to show you here uh, just to kind of give uh, a bit better demonstration on my existing tail scale network that I've got set up for myself. Okay, so here is uh, my setup here. And in fact, uh, you can see that, like I said, I've got several devices on here. What's great is you can see uh, if they're connected or not, when they were last seen, uh, that sort of thing. If you wanted to, you could also come over here and remove uh, there's actually more options here. You can share a machine. So let's say you had a friend who also had a Tailscale account with their own uh, network set up. You can share individual machines with your friends. Uh, so that's definitely something you might want to check out if you wanted to uh, do a, a virtual LAN with some of your friends. Uh, you can set uh, route settings or you can review route settings. You can disable the uh, key exp uh, exp expiration or you can just remove the device. Um, Originally, when I when I first started this video, I was talking about how it was the folks at Tiny Pilot who had uh, it kind of explained or given the idea to talk about tail scales originally. And so, if I take a look here, we can see uh, right there is my tail scale IP address, or sorry, my yeah my tail scale IP address for Tiny Pilot. And if I just put in that IP address uh, just right there, uh, I can get logged in like so. And here we go. Um, and of course, this is. Uh, all set up and running. We can see that this is my my MB uh, machine here. Uh, there's MB running right there. And I've got tail scale set up on that as well uh, because what I can actually do here uh, is pop that open. Uh, and if I click that, nothing's gonna happen. Um, but uh, if I go ahead and I click on, and I add, well, I add 8096, there is my, uh, my, my MB set up there. And Again, what I really do like about this is that if I disconnect from Tailscale, I won't be able to connect to any of these services. So I've gone ahead and disconnected. For some reason, it wasn't showing up in my tray here. Uh, I disabled it through Task Manager. So if I just go ahead and refresh this page, uh, my connection was interrupted, nothing works. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out my tiny pilot here. Uh, we can see that it's already been disconnected. The screen's not showing up, but if I refresh, again, nothing works. Uh, if I uh, refresh this page, uh, we should see that Windows Desktop uh, was just disconnected a couple of minutes ago. Um, so that's just how that kind of works. Again, let me do this. Let me open up uh, Tailscale. And uh, there we go. Now, it, now it's showing up right there. It says it's connected, so let's refresh here. Oh, right there, connected. Refresh, refresh just like that. So this is great while you're on your desktop, but there are also uh, mobile apps for uh, Android and iOS. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we are on my phone. And uh, if we if we just swipe up and go to tail scale right there, uh, we can see that it is stopped, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it active. Uh, so now that part should be good. You should also notice here, I am not connected to a Wi-Fi network. I'm only on 4G LTE here. Uh, what I wanna do though is, uh, let's say I wanna connect to Jarvis. I'm just gonna go ahead and click that. And right there, I've got my uh, IP address copied. So I'm gonna go back to my home screen, swipe up, go over here to network browser, just as an example here. And right here, we can see that I've already got Jarvis in there, but what I could do is just click on manual connection uh, and then paste that in there. Uh, and then I could put in like uh, jar, oops. All right, let's just do uh, Sino. Close enough. And then uh, with the way I've got my permissions set up, uh, we can just go ahead and click on save. This will take a little longer uh, than normal because again, I am on a uh, cellular network here. And unfortunately, um, my cell network is garbage. So let's come back to, um, oh, it's thinking, there we go. So here we are. Now we're connected uh, via uh, that 100.115.149 slash .52. That is the IP address that was given to me um, by Tailscale 
for Jarvis. And if I take a look through any of these, uh, you know, I can go like into my configs. Uh, this is all of the stuff that I have currently installed on here. I can go into like Bitwarden. Uh, there are all of my databases, my RSA keys, uh, whatever I wanted there. Uh, let's go back over to here, uh, see if we can't. There we go. So for instance, uh, if I wanted to, I could uh, look at my movies. And of course we can click on just a random thing there. And right there, there's all of the movies that I have uh, in the B folder on <laughs> my Synology device. Again, keeping in mind that I am not connected via Wi-Fi, uh, and I only typed in an IP address. I didn't have to do any ports. I'm not using any other apps, the network browser. Everything here is connected via this virtual LAN that I set up via Tailscale. So uh, definitely check out Tailscale. It's super, super easy to uh, install and set up. Uh, there are, there's a lot more that you can do with this that I haven't covered in this video. And if you guys are interested, I will definitely make a follow-up video to this to go a bit more in depth on certain things. So let me know in the comment section down below if you're interested in more information about tail scale. Also, if you're interested in checking this out, I will have a link to this in the description down below, uh, where you can also check out a couple of different ways to support the channel if you want to do that. And speaking of which, I do want to give a big shout out to my patrons, my channel members. Thank you guys. You rock. I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Um, but with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.